This is Podkit, Episode 1, Any Which Way, on Sunday, May 24th, 2015. And now, shout out to you, listener. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. Okay, put in a marker. We have started. All right. So this is a new podcast. Yes, a new one. Brand new? There hasn't been a new podcast in years. But we did it. There we Finally. Go. First Pod time for everything. Kit. Podkit, is that what we're calling it? I yeah. think that's what we're calling it. Why are we calling it Podkit? Because it's a podcast and we're developers. Kit. And at least two of the developers here are iOS and client. Will you? Or, or, or Apple and client. Or I, I will be. Yeah. At, so at some point. It's kind of a pun on like UI kit, cloud kit. Kit. Kit kit. Home kit. Home kit. All the kits. Watch kit. Cat kit. Yeah, there we go. Kit cat? Cat kit. Yeah. So there you go. Now now, now we've got Android in the mix too. Yes. Some, somewhat. Somewhat. If it's supported. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Android kit. No, it doesn't sound the same. Droid kit. Ugh. No Verizon kit. <laughs> Com kit. Wait. So so who who are we? I am Brian Mitchell. I'm a, a person. A person. You, you've you actually been on uh, podcasts I've done, I've done before. Yeah, I've done a few of the... Specials. Apple specials. Yes. I think that's about... Uh, I was on 8-Bit once with Ian. Yeah, yeah you, you. I think you were also on the Nexus once, or at the Nexus yeah, with me once. Yeah, um, And we also have a, a new person here, first time on this network and in a podcast here. Indeed, that's me. I'm Brandon Johnson. I am also a person, last time I checked. Um, I do a bunch of things mostly web dev um also some strategic communication stuff um and i am also out of minneapolis minnesota sounds I can, good i can reintroduce myself for easiness yeah yeah I'm a... we'll fix it in post <laughs> <laughs> well the joke is that i don't edit the show but you do i do but nobody knows that i edit because i edit so well so it should be mm-hmm. yeah i'm a student at university of minnesota morris computer science i do some web stuff on my own. I kind of float around. I've done some Python, Twitter bot, and Java in school. That nice. sounds good. And then hopefully iOS eventually. Yeah. Well, you you already like read all about it. And yeah. Oh, stuff. I read. I I I am in the circle without the knowledge of developing for it. So you're the uh, circumference, just not the area. No, yes. totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. Twittered it, and well, and mostly kind of through jailbreaking, and then others just tie in through that yeah on mm-hmm. twitter and we've all got that developer slant absolutely mm-hmm. yes hence the title yes and a nice logo that will be completed by the eventually time it's posted yeah 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 oh exactly. did, did you guys get that logo yet I, I think i saw it sweet put on slack wait is it the new one it should be the newest one that's oh on slack i right didn't now. see that oh downloading we're gonna see it in retina goodness oh yeah anyhow so, so of course on windows you know i got no fonts, and so. <laughs> oh, oh Helvetica new. So, I don't need the SVG. I'll need a PNG later. That's okay. I yeah. can write it out in 50, 50 ways from Sunday. Yeah, of you. course. Any which way, there are a couple of really cool things that have been going on in the world of software development, among other things, that might be kind of fun to talk about. Oh, yeah. Talking about things is what we do here. Indeed. Um, so the first thing, and I'd, I'd really like to hear you guys talk about this because I don't think we've talked about it before, okay. but uh, at, I think it was Build, um, mm-hmm. Microsoft Developer Conference yep. a while ago, um, they released a couple of different, um, we'll call them emulation layers, even though they're not really that, um, Project I- Islandwood and Project Astoria. Islandwood's the one for Mac, and Astoria is the one uh, that basically tacks on an Android subsystem onto Windows mm-hmm. um, that allows people to run, um, I- either to compile their... Uh, iOS apps for Windows, or to run their Android apps, just the straight up APKs on on Windows, um, and it, it's kind of what struck me as like such a weird slash awesome slash weird thing for Microsoft to do, and I guess part of it's that if you want to do iOS development on um, well iOS development on Windows, there's like there's there are like tweaks you have to make to that, but yet you can run an APK just straight away, and I guess that's got to be because they tack on like a whole a whole android subsystem there probably like the dalvik vm and whatever yeah um into windows right Mm -hmm. in order to make that happen right but the way that they do it with with the ios uh apps is just totally totally different Mm -hmm. right you have to you have to make changes to the source code and stuff have you guys heard about that yet uh so i haven't actually looked at what the like workflow is but yeah i i did you know i watched most of build and 
from what they said about the Android one is they 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 literally have their own VM mm-hmm. for it and it's you know sandbox like you know you'd expect it to be and yeah it has um most it has parity for popular APIs but mm-hmm. not all of them yeah and so they're doing it like based on popularity first mm. and um they said like so if you use Map API for example it won't use Google obviously to use Bing instead but it will work nice and so they also said so. Like, if you have to do, like, Google sign-in stuff, it probably yeah. won't work for now because you'd have to change that in your app for mm-hmm. their platform. But if it was, like, you know, you're doing a weather app and you're not using any super specific fancy APIs, you're just, you know, calling out to a server, sending up an address or location and getting stuff back, that'll probably be effortless to port. So nice. it's pretty simple things that don't... Right. Know, so as long as it's... Yeah. So as long as it's not account-based and it's not using super deep maybe hardware specific like graphics uis you'd probably be okay okay awesome and and that's for the android stuff i don't know too much about what they said for porting ios i know the ios is objective c only yeah so anything swift will not work um i think it was something kind of similar they don't have all the libraries Mm -hmm. over um i'm not really sure i haven't looked too much about it yeah i don't know i just thought that that was such a crazy yeah like a, a, a huge undertaking, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think they bought some company to to get Islandwood to work. I'm not I'm not sure about about Astoria, which is the Android one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really surprised uh, that that they would have to do a lot of work for that. Uh, it is um, yeah. cross compilation is incredibly complicated, even just for C and C plus plus. But to do it for a whole slew of APIs is um, huge. Totally. I'm curious how much people are going to use it too, because for like Objective C, you're going to load it and Things may not look. I feel like the amount of work you might as well just rewrite it. Well, to some point. I mean, so it, you probably have never used the Windows app ecosystem. I've poked a little, but not. Yeah. So not I, I can show you later. But I bought that phone there last year for sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. That is a Lumia five twenty one, I believe, and the apps on Windows Phone are a joke. So the the there there are no apps. Just the, yeah. there just aren't any. Like, if you wanted a weather app, you can get that, maybe. But if you want a Twitter app, not going to happen. If you want uh, a feed reader, not going to happen. There just aren't enough apps. Mm. So Microsoft is super desperate to get apps. Yeah, yeah. they were paying people for a while, weren't they? Basically yeah. Basically paying people to make yep. Windows apps. They were giving popular companies or companies that wanted to partner with them, you know, incentives and money to do it. They also made pretty big changes to their, uh, you know, like, royalty system yeah so if you made an app and you got over ten thousand dollars in revenue they would switch you to the more revenue option yeah so they would take more revenue up to ten thousand and then they would switch you to get more money from it because huh. they were desperate for people to make apps that didn't suck no totally <laughs> which which they also have another problem with in that a lot of the apps that look like they could be apps like vlc for example it's an app that says it's VLC, but it's not. It's actually an app that says information about VLC. Like, VLC oh is a video player that you can play videos with. And it's like, really? Yeah, I know. Isn't there, <laughs> yeah. their store on Windows desktop, is, isn't it kind of the same? It's, it's very Windows similar, one? yeah. And, yeah, you search VLC, you get, like, dozens and dozens yep. of these cone icons. And, and, and it's um, not, not the best experience. Do they, they don't moderate... Apparently they don't moderate, which is just crazy. Yeah, that's. I think that's why. I don't understand how they've. I I don't know what they were thinking. Clearly, not enough people use it, so they don't have any incentive to moderate. But if people did use it, nobody's gonna have fun. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Huh. <laughs> Do you hear something? <laughs> There's a cat. Yeah, cats. You know. So I, I I will be interested to see how much of that actually gets used. Mm-hmm. Um, Windows 10 is coming in allegedly seven SKUs. So says all the media, which is oh a lie. Gosh. Yeah. Well, it's not really seven SKUs. It's not like you can even buy the mobile versions. That's true. I mean, you'll buy the phone with Windows on it. You don't buy it. Yeah. So it's not really another SKU. It's just a different flavor of Windows. You know, it's uh, kind of like Android. Well, there's five billion SKUs of Android then. That's true. That's true. Right. So I, I don't know if I believe that. But when Windows 10 comes, they, they, they should be making some improvements to the Windows Store. They'll be making, on the Windows side, apps be, like, windowable. Yeah. So you can actually run Windows without taking up your entire screen from nice. the Metro side. Yeah. So maybe some Android apps would be nice to port for that. Totally. Um, if I open my Android phone here and I look... Nope, there aren't any. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> nope, trick question. 
Didn't work. I don't know. What apps do people use? I don't know. Uh, TweetBot. Is that going to be a portable thing, though? I just don't know. TweetBot I don't know. for Mac version 2 was submitted to the App Store yesterday. What? Version 2? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be great. Yosemite <laughs> and everything. Yet the iPad version still isn't out. Yeah, someday. Yeah. Come on, cat. Come here. No, I'm excited for that. It'll be totally yeah. nice. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I don't, uh, I don't know. Apps are hard. Totally. Mm-hmm. Apps are hard. Ding. And this is our first train station. This is our first train station. Choo choo! <laughs> uh, um, you're yeah. going to get off my computer. Hey, no, now your claws are in my shirt. I'm not used to cats and I'm allergic to them. So. Yeah, put oh, the cat just, down. It's just a weird, a weird experience for me to have. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Sorry if that messed up your headphones. Whoa, I can't hear anything now. No, we're good. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I don't know which what, what those words were. So there you go. <laughs> Cats <Okay>. type. <laughs> yeah. Cats so, are great so what else do we have here? Uh, so the next thing I kind of wanted to ask you guys about was um, ARM Max. So of mm-hmm. course, Apple a couple years ago bought uh, PA Semi Palo Alto Semiconductor, yep. mm-hmm. and they've kind of acted as an in-house, or presumably they have acted as an in-house um, chip design firm, and they've got some other people there's some speculation that a non chimpy from a non tech left yes a non tech to right. join ba semi mm-hmm. um to do chip design stuff which I, is very interesting oh totally yeah that that shocked everyone yeah yeah I know, right but um they've been doing some really interesting stuff and i mean mm-hmm. i mean apple of course has made really beautiful graphics and keynote that have been showing up at WWDC for the past couple of years about how huge their jumps in and performance have been for their custom silicon. Mm-hmm. Um, Almost twice as good of a GPU every year. Yeah. Yeah. And in Qualcomm, who, who I make fun of on pretty much any show I'm on, yeah, um, they have these uh, Snapdragon chips, the 808 and A10, who barely compete with the current gen, What what is the number now, A8 or A9 now? I think uh, A8. Okay, right. Yeah, A8. Yeah. Sounds right. And they barely compete with that. So, you know, Apple is clearly winning that that race. Totally. I guess the next step then might be for them to switch. Well, not necessarily switch, but to move over to ARM for, um, or to ARM for, for Mac. Mm-hmm. So that might mean taking out all the Intel chips in all of the Macs, but that doesn't seem super plausible. <sighs> yeah, not not super but I, but I mean, even if we look at the 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 new MacBook, mm-hmm. the the early 2015 MacBook, the gold gold space gray the and silver MacBook. MacBook, the regular they're MacBook. really nice. Have you seen any? Before? I I did go to a Best Buy and yeah. I did get to play with one. Couldn't figure out if Force Touch was working or not. So I know, right? Like I don't know. It Force Touch with the like quick uh, quick time video to like speed through. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess harder. I didn't open that. That, that would have been easier to tell. Totally. Yeah. But I mean, if we look at where the MacBook One is headed, or at the yeah, okay, let's call it that. The MacBook One, <laughs> to, to borrow a phrase from uh, from Marco yep. and Craig Hockenberry, I think, mm-hmm. among other people, um, it, it, the new MacBook um, that could really be a good ARM Mac, don't you think? Because we'll see. Because the biggest problem with that thing is, if you read Marco's recent review on that, yeah. like it's too slow for doing anything complicated. And it's too tiny for doing anything complicated, mm-hmm. and it's not fun. No, totally. And so, so for me, I would say the baseline performance that everybody should be experiencing is an i5 equivalent. Yeah. And if it's any slower than an i5 found in, you know, a, if it was any slower than my MacBook Air, which is an i5 from 2011, nobody should be touching it. Totally. And, you know, most Chromebooks don't measure up to that performance. I probably Absolutely. could never use a Chromebook because of that. Yeah. And so I fear that if you did go down that ARM route, unless it had some amazing battery life, that it wouldn't be relevant. I think, I don't know how doable this is at all, but you have maybe a lightweight Intel and an ARM chip, and ARM would run the operating system and some of the core apps that Apple makes, and then you can utilize that and hop in Intel to run other stuff. I don't know if that's even doable. So but... I think it'd be the other way if it were to happen. Yeah. I think you'd have the Intel chip for, for doing the OS stuff real time, you know, when you physically mm-hmm. are using it. But then you'd have the iPhone equivalent A8 or A9 or, you yeah. know, some new, you know, M number or whatever, you know, whatever yeah. you want. And um, that would take over when your MacBook Air is idle or sleeping or, you know, otherwise not okay. being used. Yeah. And so doing that kind of thing, um, how funny to go from, 
you know, server class hardware with two discrete GP or CPUs to one, then back to two of different architectures. How funny. No, totally. But uh, I think that would be much more doable and much more realistic. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So just a extreme it's a hill version of the 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 stepping in yeah, Intel CPUs. Yeah, exactly. So you'd have a, a high-powered chip, yeah. that, which would, wouldn't really be that high power. You know, it's five watts anyway. Yeah. But then you'd have the, you know, tiny watts um, arm chip that would let your battery life be long, but you'd have all of those semi-wake features. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know how much that matters for, like, a Mac, an iMac or Mac Pro, but there's no reason you couldn't add those extra mm-hmm. arm chips in there for some feature awareness. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd work really well. I, I think. I just don't. I don't see Apple ever switching all the way over to ARM. Yeah, at least in the future, just because there's just not enough reason. The PowerPC to Intel transition took a number of years, and mm-hmm. oh, totally had its bumps anyway. And they had to send those Macs that had basically, uh, you know, off the shelf hardware in it, probably like gigabyte motherboards oh, yeah. and stuff, um, for people to just for developers to just test it out and see mm-hmm. what yeah. They, what they could the do with it. For... Now, that doesn't yeah. mean that Apple doesn't have OS X running on ARM. I'm oh, sure totally. they do. And we already know they sort of do because that's sort of what iOS is. It is yeah. running Darwin in, at the bottom and sort of OS X components elsewhere. But there's no reason to make your computer slow intentionally. That's true. ARM isn't fast, but yeah. it's simple. So it's okay. And efficient. Absolutely. I mean... And what would the cost savings be even there for for not for for either Apple or consumers? Like, you're you're giving up all this performance, and unless you're getting huge battery life gains, there's not much reason to do that. And then otherwise, it could be for cost savings. So, you know those new Core M chips they're yeah. using in that um, MacBook One. That's right. I think the Core M chips are allegedly retailing for around two hundred dollars. Huh. Or two fifty, which is yeah. pretty expensive for you know a chip, and that's I don't know if that's bulk price or individual price, but I don't know why you would, I don't know why I would know the individual price. So <laughs> must be bulk price, mm-hmm. but that's ex- pretty expensive. So going switching to ARM, like what is that going to shave off? Um, Probably not much. Yeah, especially if you're trying to meet that performance level, mm-hmm. especially when the Core M isn't even that fast itself. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, what do you guys think? About Ello. Now I know I gave I gave you an invite, Brian. Yep. Uh, to Ello? Ello a while back. Yeah. Did, did, oh, yeah, did yeah, you get an invite? Oh to... yeah, I got Ello. Um, haven't used it since day one. <laughs> oh no, absolutely. See, I logged into Ello a couple of days ago, and this this is why I bring it up because um, I logged in and I was surprised to see that there were a couple of people that I were following that were still using Ello, like on a daily basis. Really? Yeah. And then I looked at their profile on their employees of Ello. Oh. Yep. Let's see. Log in. Okay. Here we go. Uh. Well, will it tell me my username? Will it tell me anything? Um, I've I've helloed in Ello. I don't even have a picture set. That that's how basic my account is right now. Nice. Um, so do you remember when you were on the podcast, Brian, that we made tent accounts? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Tentio was the thing back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the distributed Twitter. You know, the cat is attacking. Cat, no, this isn't... No, stop, now you're clawing. <laughs> I don't like cats very much. <laughs> I can see why. Oh, jeez. I gotcha. Cat, stop it. You're not welcome. I'll just hand this to you for Absolutely. a second. Thank you for catching that. No problem. My computer almost... Yeah, I saw down. that. Yeah, put that down. No. I actually... This this computer hasn't dropped on the floor yet. Yet. <laughs> yet. Look at what you it's started, had, cat. It's had some... Oh, it was... The power button was hit. Didn't shut off. Tent.io. Is that still even a thing? It um, is. It looks I, a little different. I haven't used it in years. I haven't touched it. I don't know. You know, it was such a good idea, but it didn't work. What was what was the site we used? Was it tent.is? I, you tentist, yes. That is right. Which doesn't seem to resolve for me. Because it's something about Cupcake now. What's yeah. going on? I don't even know. Should we join... And do another hello world? And... Maybe later. <laughs> Sometime. Oh, I, I bet. I think tent.is, tent is, was, uh, that used to be like tent's own. Yeah. Like, it was their, their, instance of it. their silo. Yeah. And, and now, apparently it's Cupcake. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Cupcake might be the, the place that makes tent now. Cupcake sounds better, but it still doesn't make sense. Would you like Cupcake? 
So I there was um there was Mutuals guy. Um I don't remember his full name, but it's Sean Monster on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um he made a tent client, which was pretty cool. I used it for a few weeks. Nice. Um and I was pretty surprised that somebody was actually willing to make a tent client for Android. Totally, yeah. Yeah. That's you know, awesome. it is pretty similar to a Twitter client, so I guess if you have a, a skeleton for that, it wouldn't be too big of a jump. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, th- of course, the LO joke is kind of that LO doesn't have an iOS client, doesn't have an Android client, just has web. Cool. But... And the web, it's not the best interface. It's so plain, it's hard to it, see it's, it. They've got this um, style. This, um... So, I'm just going to show Brandon, I was scrolling, yeah. and then, oh my god, your face. <laughs> Yeah, you just you just you just <laughs> scroll and da, da, wow, my my face is everywhere. If you scroll down or scroll scroll up, my face is there. Um, yeah. I guess I should set a picture, huh? I have my standard one with me and my sunglasses, and I was in uh, North Carolina last summer. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I had a one of my one of my friends who's an amazing graphic designer, Lauren Nelson at the LM Nelson on Twitter. Follow her, hire her. She's an awesome person. Um, she uh, made this picture of me. Uh, she kind of like vectorized me in uh in illustrator and that is my profile picture on elo which is kind of funny because my face is kind of pink which is hopefully not a hundred percent based in reality not a hundred percent not a hundred percent maybe maybe at least at most 70 a little bit but um Your face is more of a fuchsia oh thanks <laughs> okay thanks. then any which way um it's it's weird the way that elo kind of does things i mean the the fact that the fact that we've all haven't logged in since day one that's pretty telling. I mean, there's no incentive for me to log in because there's nobody I know there. Yeah. And even if they were there, they're also on Twitter, which is a better place to go. Yeah. And that's I, the kind of thing with app.net. I do get Except well, it isn't app. To die. Yeah. So the thing I I do get lo emails like about t-shirts and stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I unsubscribed mm-hmm. in a week one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Probably a good idea. Sorry, Ello. Eh, you know, these things happen. It is it is the circle of startup life, as it were. I mean, the same thing happened to Cupcake. It was a it was a an attempt to make a different Twitter. Yeah. What do you guys do you guys think that there will ever be another Twitter in this in the sense that Twitter was? I mean There has to be. Yeah. Once Twitter screws up enough. Eventually. But the thing is users aren't gonna join it. I mean, sure developers can join, but I mean it's gonna have to be free. For anything to catch on, it's going to have to be, um, people are going to have to be on it, so it's going to take a little while, mm-hmm. but I think, you know, they have to have apps then on all the platforms, they have to be pretty good, they have to get a lot of things right, so it's going to take a, a while, I think. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, I'm, so, I, I think the f- first thing that has to happen is Twitter either needs to fix their strange developer token guideline thing. Yeah. You know, their 200,000 accounts or die. Mm-hmm. Um. That is such a... 100,000. 100,000? Oh, what was or the... Double, or double the amount of whatever you are at. Oh, right, right, okay. That. Yeah, that is... That that has to be fixed. So many major Twitter clients have stopped mm-hmm. working because of that. And if they further restrict that, like, if if you want to be a Twitter client, you have to implement ads or, you know, yeah. implement Periscope or, you know, some other first party thing they have. Mm-hmm. If they go down that route, people will be too angry. That makes a lot of sense. But on the other hand, in addition to that, somebody has to make something that's almost as good, but somehow better too. Yeah. And I, Tent could be that, but I don't know if it is. Yeah. Um, You, you just need enough people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do you think Tent suffered from that the the uh, the good old Markdown slash W three C thing of let's make another standard? Um, it suffered because it was developer only, and mm. the developers that they really needed were you know the hipster developers, you know the Marcos and the yeah. Johns, and you know the people who were too good for it. Yeah, they all clung to the Twitter, and you know they wanted to pay the app dot net solution. You know the 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 hipsters like to pay. Oh, totally. And um. You know that that's great. I like to pay for things too that are good, and I would be f- fine paying for a client that's great. Uh, mm-hmm. That's that's wonderful. I'd also be fine hosting my own tent server shard slice mm-hmm. whatever it would be. Um, I kind of imagine that if there is something replacing Twitter, it'd be like that that WordPress kind of style yeah. solution. You know, you could use it on the hosted version, or you could use it on the you know one you host yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes a lot of sense too. Yeah, 
Um, 18% of the web, WordPress. That's wow. mind-blowing. Oh, it's such a shame. All that horrible code out there. <laughs> That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Did you guys ever use um, Diaspora? I have an account? Yeah. What is that? That was like the original Facebook killer. You can <laughs> Diaspora developers, if you're out there and listening, you can you can take that. You can trademark so it. So it's it's the first social media network that was that oh it's gonna kill Facebook? Yeah. Well, so there are some structural reasons for that. Yeah. So it, it in in the same way that tent is distributed, that you know, you can have multiple tent servers and they can all sort of communicate and you can mm-hmm. ping somebody on another one. Diaspora was supposed to be a federated social network so that mm-hmm. not one organization would hold all the servers and all the code and all the people. Yeah. Um, okay. Turns out nobody cares. <laughs> they yeah. did eventually release the product though. So it, it is real. It's on GitHub. It, it exists. It doesn't look bad either. You know, it looks surprisingly decent. Absolutely. Um, I wouldn't use it personally because nobody's there. Absolutely. But if they were there, I wouldn't be opposed. Yeah. And that brings us to the main trick of all of these things, which is that in order for people to want to use it, there must be people there. And in order for people to be there, people have to already be there. Mm-hmm. Which... Well, the, also you know, the right people have to be there. Totally. Again, if... if So, app.net's problem was too many hipsters went mm-hmm. there and not enough normal people went there. And because without normal people, you just don't get enough mass. And even if there are interesting people you want to read without normal people, there aren't enough people paying for it, and then you can't support all your team, and yeah. things happen. Also, the app.net, so many people got accounts there, but they just didn't use it. Right. Like, there were so many dummy accounts saying, you know, this person, follow me on Twitter. Right yeah, here. exactly. And, and that, that's a big problem. And and I think everyone was just holding out before they were fully invested, and then it just mm-hmm. kind of Well, I, I, I mean, I only got app.net when they offered that, you know limited number of followers slash the free version right yeah, the, yeah so limited free limited or you know limited followers and what, i tweeted about it on thing? twitter and someone sent me a followers link. followees i don't know what you call that followings follow f- followers creepers followees i th- I think followees is a good okay one. i'm not sure yeah yeah well when they introduced that i signed up but it was it's it just wasn't useful enough yeah yeah well, I guess while we're on social media, we may as well talk about Periscope too. Oh, now, Periscope! That's right. What about Meerkat? Oh wait, I got a Periscope Meerkat. right now. That was, that, was, the... was that all? Was that five weeks ago? Is that too old now? I think that's too old. Aww. I absolutely one hundred percent forgot about Meerkat. Oh, see, we just Periscope before the show started. Yeah, and that was fun. Mm-hmm. We got a couple of viewers. So if there was an Android app, I could Periscope every show. I could just set the uh, my Nexus Five right there. Yeah, corded so it'd have power continuously, and it would just Periscope nothing because no there's never a show here but if there was it could happen totally Mm -hmm. totally i i think it's kind of cool see the start the broadcast i'm gonna periscope you're gonna start with you brandon you're gonna p-scope it now (laughs) (laughs) p-scope oh my gosh we're live now so so it's p-scope on podkit that's right (laughs) is it does does that make this pod scope is that what this is are we pod scoping i think we might be pod scoping okay here we go i've now retweeted you brian Oh, it pushed it out to everyone. This oh, is, gosh. This is so meta. Oh, okay. Now I have to go do is, it. I never will see tweets when someone's Periscope. It'll, I'll see it four hours later, and then, yep. oh. And you can't archive and see things. It, it, you it, sort of can. Can you? Sort of. So with Meerkat, that was always a bit ma- major problem. Like, I would see the, you know, live on the Meerkat, yeah. and then I would go and click on it, and then it would just say, nope, doesn't exist. And that's the biggest problem with it. Even if they didn't show you the whole video, even if they should have showed you uh, whatever people liked at a certain point in it, you know, just if there was something so you can still be involved, right? Yeah. You know, just so that you could get the idea. Um, they could make a GIF of it. Oh, totally. A sped up GIF or yeah. a WebM, I guess. Because otherwise, it's sure real time. But then, if you can't share it afterwards, right? Not a lot works real time. Maybe in like over a couple of hours, mm-hmm. but there's a lot that doesn't work. Hey, there are three followers. Who's following? <laughs> That is uh, a great feature. High live viewers. So what 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 do you what do you think about the idea of having this live video thing? Why did it start suddenly now, like uh, two months ago? See, I back back in the day, like two thousand nine, two thousand ten, there used to be this service called. Uh, well, I don't remember what it was called, but it was very similar to Periscope mm-hmm. in that you could record video live and then uh, you'd share it later. It's similar in principle to UStream. Uh, okay, but. 
this is like much more informal Ustream, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of instead of having to like set something up almost like a YouTube video, you just literally push a button and go. Right. And I think what really spurred this on, at least for me, or what, what makes it a kind of attractive as a, as a service to me, mm-hmm. is that it's a lot more like Snapchat. Mm-hmm. It's like Snapchat video. So yeah. like, um, this is so weird to say, but at my office, like, I've scheduled meetings over Snapchat before mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It is weird to say. <laughs> it it is really weird to say. Like, uh, oh, I'm I'm gonna be five minutes late and like <laughs> slightly annoyed face. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any which way, um, my office is awesome. If you're listening to this, Jake, you're awesome. Um, any which way, the the fun thing about Snapchat is that you can kind of get that little piece of video, mm-hmm. but you can only share it with certain people, or right. at, at best, you can share it as a story. Mm-hmm. Um, as a Snapchat story, so anyone you you follow. But the thing can about see the it. stories is you can go back and view them. Right, it sends notifications to the original poster. But, exactly, but mm-hmm. you can view them multiple times if you need to and refer back. Exactly, and that's something that um like UStream kind of had that going for a little while. But I think what what Periscope really does well is it makes it like low cost, like cheap. Basically, right. you just start it whenever you like, stop it whenever you like. You mm-hmm. can delete it if you want. It's not it's not like the pain of uploading video in 2000. Exactly. I think that is a major thing too. Um beside that too, it's also like the the ease at which you can upload video that doesn't suck without having to process it on the device. Oh, totally. Uh you, you can't I can't imagine somebody recording video like Brian's doing right now and then 20 minutes after the show creeping above the computer. You know, like doing like editing or um Yeah. like any kind of preparation for it. Um, just being able to upload over Wi-Fi or LTE mm-hmm. is so much easier than having to store it and then deal with it. Um, think about all the people who have no space in their iPhone. Oh my gosh! All absolutely. the people. Everyone who bought an eight gig iPhone. Yeah, the, the, or uh, or sixteen. Literally this morning, I got the notification saying that my phone is running out of storage, and I've got a thirty-two gig five S. Yeah. We're we're looking at almost two years, so I'm I'm going to be getting a new a, a six soon, hopefully. Sixty-four gig is the way to go. Oh, absolutely. Not absolutely. not going to go to uh um, one twenty-eight six S. Six S. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm I'm definitely gonna wait until September. Yeah. So I'm gonna you know see whatever gonna the happen. next thing is. You yeah. know it's gonna happen. Yeah, I can't I can't you get consciously touch, do that. And you get two gigs of RAM, which I would say is worth buying. Oh my gosh, and absolutely. I think Twelve megapixel camera too. My iPad better be two is gigs. Perfect. iPhones are desperate for memory. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ever since I got the iPad Air two, it's so so clear mm-hmm. that the next iPhone is gonna have two gigs. Yeah. Like it's just it's gonna happen. Um, but mm-hmm. the the iPad is really nice for what it is anyhow but it's an ipad exactly Mm -hmm. exactly yeah but periscope is kind of cool and i think it's weird how it beat out meerkat too yeah and it's kind of a shame because i liked meerkat because it was android first no totally twitter just shut it down and yeah so sad yeah it's been known to happen been sherlocked by twitter so on the other hand like i like the idea of it but it's also a shame sort of that there's no uh, like it's not an open thing so Mm -hmm. you can't Again, self-host it or self-maintain it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of too bad. It would be kind of cool to be able to, um, like, you know, do all the streaming just like you can do, but then also automatically save it in your own digital space. Just wait. If this, then that'll release something. Uh, Maybe. (laughs) That'd be kind of cool. All right. If we're done talking about Periscope, I'm going to stop my Periscope. Okay. Bye, Periscope. Bye, Periscope. It was Good seeing you. Thanks to all our live viewers who are viewing us live while we're podcasting. Brought to you by Periscope. All right. I don't know about that. Over and out. All right. So for Periscope, is there like like a a, a constant URL like permalink? Oh, that's for that's, that's, that's uploading for replay. Oh, okay. That's right. So replay is a thing. You can but do it. is it the whole thing, and is it available forever? I think it is, oh. unless you delete it. Okay. And I can save it to Camera Roll. Well, that's nice. That's so versatile. I mean, like the okay, I, Meerkat I didn't that. have that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I, that's clearly why they did not make an Android version yet. Oh, totally. Because features require Android to work, which it doesn't. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I used to have a. Did I ever tell you about my Android Incredible? No. Oh George yeah, Incredible. yeah, you did. Yeah. Yep. I'm Still playing in real thing. time. All right. Back. Very good. Cool. Nice. I'm not going to save that to my camera roll, though. No. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of video. But now on my recent, I can just play it. That's you, awesome. You know, so like Google has their Google photo backup and it also backs up video. Yeah. And you know, I'll take a video of the dog playing or, you know, just something that's interesting on campus or whatever. And then suddenly I notice 
oh, you're using another 1% of your space. And I'm like, what? Did, well, how? I didn't do anything. And that video, mm-hmm. oh, you know, it was only 700 megs. And it's like, really? That's an awful lot of storage for a video to take up. And for, yeah. Because, you know, it's whatever 13 megapixel camera. Yeah. That's not, it's not okay. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can hope that that stuff's in just temporary file storage and will eventually get deleted, but... I don't know, because it's a backup, so that I assume they're backing oh, up gosh. your video, and yeah, it you're right. ca- it, it, it's very penalizing to take video when you have that auto backup on. Totally. And it's very complicated to delete it from auto backup storage, Yeah, but also keep it still on the phone, Yeah, because they don't want you to do that. Mm-hmm. Just Google. Google. Yeah. Hey, you guys know, uh, ever since like last March or something like that, or this, this past March, we all get a hundred, um, a hundred percent unlimited, uh, really percent unlimited free storage oh. through our edu- uh, education. I podcast. did not know that. That's right. Huh? That's right. And we get to keep those after we graduate as long as we use them. Yep. Once, a, once every, uh, three months. I can handle that. Yeah. You, you have to log in from, from the actual, from the internet, from the web mm, instead of, instead of doing, uh, just fine. SMTP auth. That's just fine. have to put that plug in there because lots of people don't know that. That's but. fine. I can handle it. Yeah. Just set a candle but they, under there. It locks out a lot of other U of M services, though, after you graduate yeah. when you're not currently enrolled. Yeah. Well. So you, you can't use, like, uh, uh, computer labs. No, uh, that's GitHub. to be expected. Yeah. And that's that's just because that keys off of a, a different part of your account that's deactivated when you right. graduate. That's but, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can always just re-enroll. <laughs> yeah. Take some more classes. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Take or that be, compilers again, or become an employee. Oh, oh. Yep. I don't. I don't know if I want to teach anybody about a compiler. Employment.umn.edu <laughs> slash people slash people. Soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta love it. We're hey, sh- shout out! Shout out to all the upgraders who upgraded the upgrade. You guys are awesome. Many Brennan, high fives. Brennan is the king of shout outs. Yeah, that's to that's good though. Because he, he actually people he knows might actually listen to him. <laughs> I don't know. He's the star of the show here. Psh, I don't know about that. You guys are the stars of the show here. Eh, nobody knows who I am, and that's okay. Anyhow, what else do you guys want to talk about? Well, I heard you were talking about some kind of a conference you went to. That's right. Yeah. I, I did. Did you I, actually go places? I, I did. did. Oh, my gosh. So, a little bit of backstory here. Um, I was just feeling kind of down one weekend over spring semester um, because calculus is difficult. And I was like, you know what would make me feel better? Hanging out with techie people. <laughs> so um, that's part of why I'm here with you guys. High fives. Oh, yeah. Techie people. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, See, that wasn't on Periscope. We, nobody knows it happened. That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, okay. We'll, uh, we'll Periscope again. Just mm-hmm. a high five. Okay. Um, and uh, and uh, my good buddy, Kevin Winery, who uh, probably does not know what I just called him my good buddy but any which way he's really cool he runs javascript minnesota mm-hmm. he sent out an email saying uh hey if you're interested we're hosting a conference in san francisco the company he works for which is twilio mm-hmm. uh is hosting a conference and uh it would be really cool if people from javascript minnesota wanted to go and i looked at the email and i saw that harper reed the amazing harper reed who is uh the cto of obama for america so he did a lot of the technical infrastructure for for them um which is crazy because of course OFA was like one of the most technologically advanced campaigns ever. Mm -hmm. Probably pretty safely you can say that it's the most technologically advanced fundraising political action campaign ever. Definitely. Um, And now he's over with Modest um, with uh, Clint Ecker, who used to work for Ars Technica, and they're doing some other fun stuff with uh, building shops. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Um, He's one of the people who was there. Um, Werner Vogels, who is the CTO of Amazon, gave a really awesome talk about... um, uh, the way that AWS deploys new services, mm-hmm. um, and that was that was really interesting. He, he uh, I think his talk is online. You should definitely check it out if you uh, if you haven't already. But uh, basically, when I saw that speaker lineup, I was like, "Dude, you're there." I just have to go. <laughs> Plus, it was not as difficult to coordinate or expensive to attend mm-hmm. as WWDC, of which is not. nice because so it was under sixteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> So that made it easier. That made it much easier. So I just, I, you know, basically, when compared to WWDC, it's like it's just airfare and uh, airfare and hotel, right? Exactly. <laughs> but you know, mm-hmm. uh, 
anyhow, so yeah, sure enough, this past week I went out there and I said hi to Kevin and the rest of the Twilio gang. And that was really, really awesome. A really well done conference. Mm-hmm. Shout out to any Twilio people listening. You guys are also really cool. And I'm sending you digital high fives right now for awesome food, awesome fun. And, uh, oh my gosh, those, those, they had an after party that was called Bash and it was a carnival. Yeah, and, I just saw that on the website. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. They had this game called Code Chip where you just had to go through and find all the errors in, in the code okay. and it, they'd toss you at it in a bunch of different languages. Uh-huh. And it was intense. It That's was so cool. off the rails. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you have to look at rails? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh-huh. You, you saw that one coming, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was like PHP, a uh, little bit of Perl um, because. Because well, Pearl. I mean, the, even if there were bugs in the Pearl, you can't see them because the whole thing is a bug. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Some JavaScript, some Python, stuff like that. Yeah. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a couple of really awesome talks, too, that you should seek out, other than the Werner Vogels one, which is part of the keynote. Um, there was a talk by uh, one of the developers of the Swift API for Dropbox, mm-hmm. which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, she really talked about a lot of the different ways that... Uh, that Dropbox is implementing um, their uh, kind of API client for for Swift developers um, in ways that make you not want to cry, which is good because Swift is new and changing rapidly. Uh, very rapidly. Very Swiftly, rapidly. Maybe. Ooh. Oh, geez. <gasps> um, and and it, it was a really cool talk. So if you can find that, seek it out too. And um, uh, there was also a, a user experience designer. Um, who I will put her stuff in the show notes. She is really awesome. Um, inclusive tools is oh, um, did... Guillermo Ranch Ranch Rosh. No, nope. what what do you what, well, but what how do you say his name? Because uh, words are hard. Uh, he was a Moon Tools guy. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, he uh, did Socket IO and Cloud Up, but he also was uh, involved with Learn Boost. But before that, he made the Moon Tools Forge. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. See, these Mutuals guys are really uh, out everywhere. there. Yeah. Uh, they, they really are. And um, yeah, Mutuals, by the way. Mutuals. Shout out to the Mutuals <laughs> team. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So, they, they don't even know who I am. Yeah. Yeah, they do, Ryan. No. Well, one of them. One, at least one of them yeah, does. One, you yeah. Knew most of them. Yeah. I, I, did, I have talked to most of them. Gotcha. Who knows if they know anybody? Understood. Yeah. So anyhow, um, Sally Shepard, who is a uh, user experience designer and a uh, really awesome accessibility advocate, um, gave a great talk about um, developing uh, iOS and uh, OS X apps mm-hmm. uh, in an accessible manner and in an inclusive manner, which is really cool. She's got a Kickstarter going on, which I just put in the show notes. Um, if you are interested at all in understanding how the programming decisions we make uh, affect the way that people can use it uh use your products when um when in situations where um people can't uh have have uh vision dif- difficulty mm-hmm. seeing or uh or impaired uh motor movements uh or even even stuff like uh life lear- like learning impairments um she has some really great resources on that kickstarter page um she mm-hmm. hopes to make them available for free but if you give to the kickstarter it can help make sure that it gets made, which is cool. So this um, this nice badge here is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. It changes color. Totally, and it's and it's all uh, the the color combos are high contrast. Yeah, exactly. Nice too, which yeah, is, I, I could tell. Yeah, which is part of the visual pun, as it were. It's so, awesome. It's always good to make your entire operating system high contrast. Totally. There was a a little game I was poking around through related to co- colors and stuff. Yeah. Um, the D3 library, what does that stand for? Let me look. Yeah, uh, data-driven documents. Yes, exactly. Um, they have a bunch of example stuff. There is some game on there that was... I'm trying to find it. It's a color-matching game. Oh, nice. Um, wow, Safari just died on me. I typed match, and it... it anyway. Um, it, it's where you, you have to... Uh, match one one hue or saturation to another one mm-hmm. just by moving your mouse around a color wheel. It's just tricky. It's kind of interesting. I would link it if I could find it again, but it'll take a while. That's fine. I'll put it in the notes. Yeah, exactly. Totally. It'll be That's there. what it's for. Because this is a podcast. It's not a Periscope. You can listen to it after. You're already playing it, dear listener. Are, are you already listening to this? Is that is that true? Is this a show? I think this is the show. <laughs> oh, I love that. 
Okay. There's one more uh, super, super duper Apple tech thing that's going on okay. that I think you guys might get a kick out yeah. of. Yeah. So Apple released the font called San Francisco. Yes. And Brian knows about this quite well. Yes. Uh, he's He's been doing some fun stuff with San Francisco, it sounds like. I mean, not really, but I have it installed on my computer. That's step one. <laughs> um, any which way, there, there was a really interesting um, post out a little while ago, and I think I just put that in the show notes or, or in Slack. So either which way you guys can do I'll, I'll um, move it over for you. It's Helvetica Noia versus San Francisco. Can you tell the difference? It's a quiz, um, kind of in the BuzzFeed Ooh. style. And it it's really, really um, kind of fascinating. Because when you, when you first take it, it's like, oh, yeah, psh, of course, because Helvetica Noia is Helvetica Noia. And San Francisco is San Francisco. Like, Helvetica is so, it, it's blockier, right? Um, it's it's less condensed. Um, and there are a couple other aspects to it that you can kind of see. But when you start taking the quiz, then, then they kind of have you matching up a single glyph against a single glyph, a single letter, as it were. Um, and it gets really difficult to see which is which. Are, are you doing it right now, Brian? Uh, no, I'm pasting in my... I found my color matching game. Hey, But, awesome. like, the... Because San Francisco was pretty... was kind of based off of Helvetica Canoe, right? Oh, totally, yeah. If that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm using the uh, the uh, John Gruber-approved Helvetica Noia. And I might just do the rest of this in a John, John Gruber accent, if that's okay. <laughs> that doesn't even sound close. I know. <laughs> okay, good. That's why I'm... That that's the because you you haven't said that's the joke uh enough uh <laughs> that's the uh I don't know is this the show I well only half the John time he Gruber's forgets he's tweets. doing a show <laughs> that's true yeah that's true I'm gonna play this game now though no it's awesome I got I got eighty three point three percent so right. I don't know the difference between either of these fonts because I don't I don't live this iOS lifestyle. Um, I'm just kind of alternating between A and B. I got 58, <laughs> so I'm pretty good. Nice. Yeah, that's that's better. There are actually some some people who use iOS and, and macOS day to day who got like oh, 30%. Gosh. So, well, yeah. when you're oh, randomly picking A or B, you know, you should get about 50. <laughs> that's that's what they say, isn't it? I, I hope so. Yeah. Seven out of 12. But I'm I'm kind of also judging in knowing the Apple Watch and the screen size into that's my true. factor. Oh, right, because uh, San Francisco is on the Apple Watch because mm-hmm. it's tiny. Mm-hmm. Thin, is that right? Yeah, condensed kind of. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, well, I'm also thinking like more spaced out as well. Okay. Maybe? Yeah. If that's... I have no idea if that's actually accurate or not. I don't know. That's what I'm going with when I'm entering this right now. You know, no, totally. you know speaking of that, uh, it, you might have read um, Marco's um, you know, post about revising his smartwatch yeah. um, app to be better yeah and since i don't have an apple watch i don't really know oh, the is design for overcast yeah yeah for yeah. overcast you know he he had designed it with the emulator and then he redesigned it after he had one and used it in person i really liked reading about it because oh, totally. that was a very good post because it, it had a lot of um you know great observations about actually having using it in person versus just the emulator yeah. and just the speculation of how you convert an ios app to a smaller platforms app um you know I don't I don't have an Android Android Wear watch either, which is hard to say. Android Wear watch. Mm-hmm. Um but for the most part, it doesn't seem like Android Wear has apps. Yeah. If there are apps, I don't know about them. Like I hear people talking about their Apple Watch apps mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. But I never hear anything about Android Wear apps at all. I know there's an SDK for it, yeah. so there must be apps for it, but I don't know where they are. Nobody cares. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the people that I know who have Android Wear watches use them as like notifications exactly. devices. Exactly, that's what it's really good at. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. And I, I would venture to say that that's a lot of what the Apple Watch is good at, too. And mm-hmm. I mean, that's definitely a lot of what and Pebble's that's, good at. And that's what Marco ended up saying. Yeah. That it's easier just to have little notifications and, you know, really simple interactions than a real app. Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the victory of design thinking, as my design thinking professor would say. I got a 58%. Oh, nice. see, I wasn't even trying. <laughs> I, I, they all look the same to me. <laughs> oh, no, they totally do. And you know, I think there's another one out there that's matching it with uh, Roboto, which is the Google. Oh, font. well, you can tell the difference between them. I don't know. Roboto is the only, the only thing font. I got for San Francisco and Havana Canoe is the the dot and I. Oh, totally. Oh, totally. It's... See, all of the hipsters made fun of Roboto because, you know, it's not a good font. What? But... I don't know. I, I liked it well enough. I used it. I, used I, it on, I think I used it on at least one of my websites. I don't yeah. know which one. A lot of websites. No, totally. Yeah. It's, it's used on mine right now because of 
material design. Yeah, yeah of totally. course. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's 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 a really great font too for for. I mean, it's it's it. I found it a really awesome Helvetica replacement. Um, yeah. I th- I thought it was really useful, kind of as almost a drop in for Helvetica. Mm-hmm. But th- there's another there's another one that I really like that kind of replaced Roboto for me once I learned that it's that it's a googly font, which is not to say that I don't like Google because Google is great. But I just I just don't want to make everything that I make look like it's a Google thing all the time. And as a result, I found this one that's in a similar family but slightly different called Exo. Oh yeah, uh, I use Exo somewhere also. Yeah. Is, yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it looks it, great? it looks fairly decent. Decent, yeah. Yeah. Um. And then there's there's another one too that's called Crete Round that I've been kind of obsessed with recently. Um. I use it on Brandon dot Inc. or B R N D N dot Inc. Mm-hmm. Um. But it's it's cool and it looks fancy when you mix it with blue and red, which again is my color palette. So welcome like to that. the Nexus. Exo is <laughs> Exo is a little like too out there for my everyday usage. I'd think. Mm-hmm. I think. Well, I mean, I don't know if you, would you what, so do you use that as your body font or? I generally don't use it as a body font. Yeah. No, I right. use it as like a title font. Yep. Yeah. I guess right. that would make more sense. Yeah. Yep. There's, there's a certain weight of it that makes it pretty all right for a, uh, for a, uh, a body font, but I, I would say usually probably, probably not, um, Exo, ultra bold, but yeah. XO2 looks a little more laid back. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a little edgy as is. Yeah. Edgy, huh? Yep. Two A G five me is that, is that what's coming next? Might be okay. Might be. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I I had not seen EXO two, but that it looks a lot better. You're right. Mm-hmm. You should you should upgrade. Just add one we'll that one character and bam, your site is up well. To date. Well, I need to I need to download it to my computer first oh. to update all my my static graphics because because static graphics. Well, I was trying to look through the Nexus code here to see what fonts I actually used in it. I used a font called Railway. Railway's the best. Oh, if you go to umn.edu, yeah. the new U of M homepage oh. has Railway in it. Is it. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what I use Railway for. Is that for, like, about us academics? or? Yeah, I believe that's right. That seems right, because I'm sure I use it for something similar. Yeah, it's uh, used for all, all the links on the page, and I think... So if it, when you look at Or maybe the, the body of those little section things too. yeah we this, all would fly all that stuff i'm realizing this this podcast is very uh umn centered well you know we kind of go there frequently true occasionally five yeah. days a week seven yeah days a week mm-hmm. lots six of days. days a week well, too many days but we're for the most part referencing things that anyone can get to so I suppose oh totally that's okay well, you know it's uh as they would say inside baseball <laughs> inside baseball indeed <laughs> uh go yankees there you go that was my that was my john gruber <laughs> Should I go get my daring fireball shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. It's good. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Any which way, I think I think that uh, that just about wraps up the uh, the the signal portion that we quickly broke out of, which is okay. Mm-hmm. Breakout awesome session. Even. <laughs> Conference puns. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So what's what's going on for you guys? What's up next? Um. Like my uh, well, I'm about to start redoing my website. Nice. We will see how that turns out. Uh, I'm my current setup is the Angular full stack Yeoman generator. Yeah. So it uses Grunt. It's more or less hasn't been updated since September. Yeah. So it's a bit dependency is a bit out of date. Um, I'm just looking for something new. Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know full Mongo Express Angular node. Um, my new one, I don't have Mongo hooked up yet, but I plan to, but it's using Gulp instead of Grunt for a task runner. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be trying to use ES6 for JavaScript. Nice. Transpiling with Babel. Babel. How do you pronounce that? Babel's um, fine. The Mumford and Sons pronunciation is canonical. So what is the answer? I don't know. I've never heard that song. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, Winers. Let's see. What, and then I'm going to use <laughs> Angular. But I'm also using Foundation. My old site currently uses Bootstrap and Boot Angular. Or Material Boot Bootstrap. Angular. <laughs> Boot Angular. <laughs> yeah, there could be some interesting portmanteaus there. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. No, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it up. Who knows? But I'm hoping not. We'll see. So I'm I'm what I'm what I'm really waiting for you to do is figure out how you're going to get some search engine to actually scrape your site correctly. Yeah, because for me, that's a... I, you know I've had blogs for years and dinosaur, and um, without that, you know, googling 
What's the point? Gotta, gotta have an index somewhere. Oh, totally. Like, half yeah. the errors I Google are my own pages. That's awesome. Yeah. Because uh, I keep running into the same stupid problems about SML every single time. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, the trick for me, I so my my main blog right now, which is johnsonmn.org, yeah. um, it is based on Casey Liss's Camel Engine, mm. uh, which is great, but I hadn't pulled from the, the master repository in like six months. Mm-hmm. So as a result, now it's basically entirely different. Yeah. Um, and there are a bunch of merge conflicts, which is fun. Hi, Casey. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to take all of the posts out of it. Remove the repo yeah. <laughs> and, and and plug it into the new darn so thing. When, it's all so is his was it his engine all text based? All text based. So it's I like that a bunch a of files. That's kind of great. It I is kind of like it. It it's really cool and it's super dead simple to so set up. So it's completely static. Totally static. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it's dynamically generated Markdown, which is then cached, and, right? And yeah. then yeah. served statically. Mm-hmm. So all all of the routes are just regular so old it's, it's file like paths. uh jekyll with github page and stuff you know exactly. it's funny I, how... I really i like jekyll i used it i tried it thing. and i you know, like i could just do this in wordpress yeah. i hate wordpress but i could just do it in wordpress and it'd be better no totally no totally but i see i i feel like i'm having some even though it's static files i feel like i might be having some seo troubles with it which might just be which, that's because, kind of suspicious yeah which might just be because i am really lame at setting up my website with google so much to do i know it, it, i don't know it's google, got google, google has and, a yeah. um a page where you can plug it through and it'll scrape it and yeah. it'll tell you what's yeah the about. webmaster thing. yeah whatever yeah it's called and I've, I've run it through that before and it's got you know it's fine no errors and yeah. everything but you know maybe it's because my name is brandon johnson i bet that's it, it could be they might be confused to who's writing it that's true well i mean the the main thing is that whenever whenever i search brandon johnson any topics on my blog it's just kind of like yeah page yeah. page 57 so that's that's probably that, my biggest issue that, that is a probably an issue yeah which is why I need to find some other online identity that isn't my name. Oh. Which is a story for a different podcast. Oh. Start using your middle name, too. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> my middle name is my dad's name, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is even more popular. Oh, name, great. So. First, middle, last. Maybe. Well, that, yeah. yeah. I don't know. The, there, Just take there all ways. the letters in your, all of your names, change them around, and then use the new name. Yeah, yeah. the anagram. Yeah. The anagram solution. Cool. Right. Yes. Is there an anagram generator online? Oh, well, there, there is. There must be. Uh, there is. Um, they, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We did this at the office one time. There's of course a, you did. There is uh yeah, and then we Snapchatted them to each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, there are some really awesome anagrams you can make out of a name. Like uh, there's a uh, um, Avenger C Kill was one of them that we came up with, which is pretty darn cool. Um, th- th- there's there's some fun stuff out there if you, if you just anagram your name. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's let's do this in real time here. I gotta see this. Okay. I'm using the one from wordsmith.org. Yep, same. I'm I'm just looking through to f- try and find like one. There are thousands or hundreds of. It just stops at M. Oh. There are a lot. Like for the first the first word. Yeah. Are you just doing first last name? I I did first middle last for me. Okay, I'm gonna do that as well. <laughs> Banjo randomness John. <laughs> Sandman job snore John. Sandman, job, Senor John. Uh oh, this is wow. <laughs> Badman, John's jar noons. Okay, Doberman's Jan John's nos. Uh, mad rappers yarn. <laughs> <laughs> mad rappers yarn. Oh my gosh, that's that's the best. I, I kind of like that one. Here, hold on while I tweet this. Mine is still loading. What's going on? You know, I'm just gonna. Copy my name, so I have to retype it. Reload the page. Oh, totally. Anagram solver. Now, this is this is a great use of time. For... You, you know, but so the the beauty of this is, as long as it's quiet enough, the truncator truncates it. Okay, let's just be silent. <laughs> Darn snob John on. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> That's dot com. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wonder if it's available. Oh come on, it's got to be. Everything's available after five letters. That's true. That's true. It is, oh yeah, it's just like timing out on Brian Scott Mitchell. <laughs> Darn snob John on is available, but it's also totally not real, impossible. To... <laughs> yeah, I I could always get Darn snob John on dot design, but but why? But why? Yeah, gosh. Well, so your your design slogan is 
I didn't design my name, but I can design your website. <laughs> that is that is really awesome. That is really awesome. <sighs> so how many characters are you putting in? Because I'm putting in a total of 18. I'm putting in 12. No, 14. How many I feel letters like are in my name? 18 breaks it. Yeah, I don't know how many letters are in my name either, but that, num- that many. I'm just going to go Brian Mitchell. And we're going to see if that's any better. Did you know Clint Eastwood is an anagram of Old West action? Oh, that's great. That's that's just about as perfect as it can get. But let's see. <laughs> Tribal Chin Elm. Elm. <laughs> In Minnesota, that's that's a little bit too real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does, do do tri, do Tribal Chin Elms get uh, Dutch Elm disease? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Not not to get too inside baseball on you here, but how about that Pleasant Street uh, construction project? Am I right? Oh, I haven't been down there lately. I haven't been there. I don't oh. know where Pleasant Street never, is. I, uh, this this names. baseball's too inside. It's all inside well, my I, brain. I, it's just I haven't been to the field lately. Yeah, so Ple- Pleasant Street. When, is, when did it happen? Like like this past week. Okay, that's why it's I totally, haven't been down there. It's week. totally torn up, which um, makes me sad because I take that bikeway all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. But that bike that bikeway is like so just all the way down to SDSS or. Yep. Wow, that sucks. Well, I guess I don't know because I can't get that far, but uh, presumably based on pts.umn.edu, which is Parking and Transportation Services. So it does not sound good. It doesn't, but they're making it a lot better. So it's going to be a two-way bikeway as opposed to okay. a one-way, I think, mm-hmm. or a two-way carway. One of those. Yeah. It'll be two ways one way or the other way. Well, I, I, I feel like they're trying to get as much traffic off that bridge as possible. Oh, absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah. Because it's, you know, not good enough for normal people anymore. Unless you're walking on top of it. Yeah. Or biking on top of it. Or we're taking the train. Oh, my gosh. We should talk about light rail someday. Oh, yeah. You know, anytime. I'm a big fan of light rail. Like now? If you want. Let's do it. Let's do it. Light rail. Light rail. Light rail. There you go. That's good. <laughs> Done. You know, there's been a lot of shows where that's as much as we said on something. Those are the best. Light, I have to say light rail is the best. I was in, I was in San Francisco, and I, I took, like, from the moment I got off the plane... Mm-hmm. To till the moment I um, got picked up at Union Station, mm-hmm. um, that's that's the St. Paul Union Station or Union Depot, I guess, as it's yeah. more properly called. I took I took public transport the whole way, and mm-hmm. it was all rail, which is fun. Isn't that great? Yeah, my gosh, rail is fun. Just extra excitement because it's uh, well. It also you don't have to drive it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, and like well, like a bus versus mm-hmm. rail. A bus is a little more wobbly. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, a little louder and yeah. Well, and, and here, like, I used to think that the blue line was pretty much useless because it just took you from, like, Nicollet Mall right. down to the Mall of America. Yeah. Which is great for, like... Them. But yeah. great for Maryland, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, it's, but it's not, like... But the green line really makes a big stride in where it goes because it goes from way down there to way over there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, fa- the fact that you can actually pretty quickly get from downtown st paul to downtown minneapolis mm-hmm. like that is the thing that we have needed for a long right. time i think and then it serving the u of m campus is huge too. oh yeah totally and university of, i think it's almost more i don't know if it's used is it used more than the blue line i, I don't know i numbers. think it i think it beat um anecdotally i'd say that it that it definitely that the usage numbers have beat the blue line mm-hmm. uh, in the first definitely in the first year i think i saw that too i'm looking right now i wouldn't be surprised because you know, people live in Minneapolis, but if you can live in Minneapolis, you could probably already have a car. Totally. You know, if you're rich once, you're rich, rich twice. Um, I don't know. So, quick shout out to Streets.mn, which is a cool blog about urban planning and stuff in in Minnesota. Um, they have a chart from July fourth, twenty fourteen, which I think is, if I recall correctly, if my maths agree, is this time last year essentially yep, launch date plus yep. or minus a couple months. Mm-hmm. Um, they have huge, 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 um, spikes in average daily ridership, um, compared to, uh, compared to the previous days, um, for the first three days of of ridership. Mm -hmm. So the, this, this is, this is awesome looking. I guess I don't compare it to blue line. You really get to go somewhere with the green line. Totally. You know, uh, the, but the problem with all the lines in general is that there really isn't that much to go. Totally. Um, I, I hope they add. I know because they were trying to do that other line, the line to the middle of nowhere to Eden Prairie. Well, I hope that goes to Eden Prairie because right. I end up working there. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally useful. For, I mean, like there's a point where there are going to be a, a few key lines that are very beneficial and will help a bunch of people and be totally worthwhile. And there's mm-hmm. 
just to grow the system, you have to have branches that don't benefit as many people. Right, exactly. Just to grow the system and then... Connections. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. I would love for there to be uh, something that goes north of St. Paul. Yeah. Like that, that, for example, would be perfect. Mm-hmm. But um, I hope they have one that goes into St. Paul more and then maybe into Minneapolis more. So well, something, right. I think it's something down like Snelling Avenue or something. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh. I mean, Octoros, I don't know where like it would that. go like on Snelling. Like where would that go? Like Snelling? Yeah. Snelling South? Might be. Because uh, there's not really much Snelling North of here. Yeah. Um. I mean, you might get it down well, to Rosedale. Well, no, if it goes past the fairgrounds. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Um, they are going to do a high speed. They could go from like Rosedale on, all the way down to to um, Mall of America or something. Yeah, Replace well, that 84. Would, well, right, but that would be basically getting from Rosedale to 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 Snelling Station, and then you take the blue line or the green line to the blue line, and the blue line to. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I just took the green line or the blue line to the to downtown east, and right. then that down to to Union Station, which is technically not the fastest way to get there, according to Metro Transit. Nah, but it's nice. the most it's the most real way to get there. Yeah, because is... who wants to take a bus? It was off the rails. It, it was on the rails. It was so on the rails, it was off the rails. It was object-oriented, too. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was indeed. Yeah. It was indeed. Mm-hmm. That's oh an gosh. instance of a car. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely an instance of a passenger in that instance. <laughs> well done. <laughs> mixed mixed instance instances. W- were there any observers? Uh, there were a few, uh, mm. a couple of, uh, Metro Transit police officers came on to check oh, the really? tickets. Hey, they That's... haven't been doing that a lot lately on campus. They've, really? you know, been parked outside of the train station, Yeah, but they haven't been coming on lately. Huh. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I know that there was a big push because somebody did a survey that was basically like, nobody ever pays for light rail. And that's, like... and it's, and it's true. I saw my gra- my, not graphics, I saw my user interface design professor not pay. It was hilarious. Oh, totally. Well, I mean, the the fun the fun thing about it is that um, on campus we have the like the campus zone pass, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Which is which is all well and good, yep. but I mean, it doesn't. You don't charge anything to it because it's just a uh, okay. This person is okay to ride between these stations right. because I have this card, mm-hmm. which is pretty. Which makes things like so many degrees of unenforceable. Yeah, because it's honor system, which is really convenient, but you know. There's always going to be a percentage of people, but if they still, if they do never enforce, then no one's going to do it. But the trick is that you, with if you pick the honor system, you kind of have to just yeah. go with the honor system yeah, and yeah. be aware of what what leven, revenue you're going to lose with that. Yeah, because when you when you start to enforce the honor system, then you run into the honor system no longer being an honor system. Well, so yeah. the reason people at the on campus anyway take the train to yeah. to and from is because it actually comes on time all the time. Oh, totally. Nobody would have taken the 16 or what was it? Uh, 50 before. Yeah. Um, you know, if it was there just to get down to Kaufman from the stadium oh, totally. because that's that it never comes. It never is there. Yeah, and it drives right past you. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know like what they were expecting. That's that's exactly what would have happened. Totally. Mhm. But I will conclude this section with a shout out to Metro Transit <laughs> for being Metro Transit. You guys are cool. Yeah, they uh, they are pretty cool. They um, you know, I actually got tickets to them for the Home and Garden show. Oh, really? Yeah. Awesome. So I, you know, they have uh, you know, Winner Wednesday or they have some kind of contest on Wednesdays. Yeah. And I retweeted one thing just to spread the word. I had no intention of winning. And then I won. But there you I go. won those tickets and so I took the family to the uh, Home and Garden show. That oh, was super fun. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Twitter contest. Speaking of Periscope, Marco is on Periscope right now. Oh, what? what? Oh my gosh. Let's let's scope let's let's scope out this periscope. Okay. okay, shall we? What's what's he periscoping about? Um, he it said, um, our wives on Slotzilla. What is that? Uh, what the what? Hmm. I'd say we could just like skip this whole section. <laughs> What are all these hearts? What does this mean? Does anybody this know what this that, means? It means that people are faving it, I think. I don't think we can fave it from our thing. But. Well, I think that's really cool. <laughs> Honestly, do, do you think most of the people down there know what Periscope is? That's a good question. I, I don't, the people we've passed so far, if I had to guess, I would guess they probably are not familiar with it. Ryan, your computer is a good five seconds behind mine. Not surprising. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea what... 
I have no idea what's going on right now. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. I uh, liked hearing his voice. You know, it's always good to hear Marco. He's a cool dude. That's for sure. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't know his he, voice. You know, you gotta listen to the podcast. I think the cat ate this. He he. <sighs> Marco basically invented Tumblr, except for the parts that David Carp invented, which is most of it. Did Marco Marco work for Tumblr? <gasps> yeah, he was employee was... number one. He okay. made PHP because okay. PHP is a real language, right, Marco? Okay. <laughs> kind of, kind of like Pinocchio, right? Yeah. <laughs> I should probably start listening to podcasts because I have a forty-minute drive in the morning. Well, you've or got, half that, I have all the recommendations to send you. That's Brian. like half half an episode. Okay, send me them all. In 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 text form later, so I don't have to think about it now. I, I will I will give you an OPML file that oh, you can just better. straight up import, and you will be. Yeah. Does that go into Overcast? You betcha. Yeah, Overcast. What's even an better. OPML? It's a podcast proprietary. Not really though. Yeah, file. it's XML. Uh, <laughs> only in Java. Jo- mm, mm-hmm, okay. I could give you a JSON file with it too, if you want, but. And I'll just run it through a converter, and then it'll import. It. Yeah. Well, it, it's OPML. It's for feeds mostly, right? Because uh, I remember getting an OPML from Google Reader before it died. Oh, Google Reader! Google Reader. Remember when Safari could Reader. do RSS? Also, I've never used an RSS reader. I'm just gonna say that. So you're missing out. I use, really. I use I use on Red. Hmm. I use G Reader. I don't know. I yeah. use Twitter, Reddit, Pocket. Pocket's pretty cool, but I, I really like on Red uh, by the Super Top guys. Mm-hmm. So we've seen Prenderville and uh, Pedro Golson, I think. Or maybe I'm messing that up, but the, the, those two guys, they're really cool. Um, and they took it over from somebody else whose name escapes me right now. Um, but it, it's really cool. It's kind of swipey um, in the same sense that like Tweetbot is. Mm-hmm. It's it's like the Tweetbot of RSS readers, I'd say. Oh, right. Um, it's awesome. The so Tweetbot if, of X. Yeah. It's like Uber, but for Tweetbot. <laughs> like Lyft, but for Uber, but for Tweetbot. Like Snapchat, but for Tweetbot, but for Uber. But for news. Nah, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay. Because that's what Snapchat's for now, right? Yeah, it's for oh news. My gosh, totally. Yeah, so yeah, like, Discovery I mean, tab. The New York yeah, Times is on there. Yeah, it's so dumb. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Do you know. Snapchat much, Ryan? I don't. I don't even have that. Okay. I, I'm gonna have to say no. <laughs> Snapchat is it so much It doesn't make sense. I like Snapchat. It makes less than no sense, but that's what makes it The fun. new emoji next to people's names, too, is just interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, just, I just don't know. Like, people can barely talk. People barely talk to me with normal communication methods. But with Snapchat, they just tap one extra button and they're talking to you without mm. any work. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah. They could just talk to me with a real that's for sure. hangout thing or facebook or or any other number of methods pro tip i heard you can uh copy a new line return Mm -hmm. character paste it in and get a new line in snapchat what at least i i mean i saw a little thing that would do that maybe they that That breaks everything though hold on a line break everything oh no i'm gonna gonna try that i'm gonna (laughs) more like form feed am i right carriage return oh wait i need to copy a return character first yeah that's probably important. It's so complicated. Oh my gosh, yeah. Have you guys ever run into the uh the uh, system the the system specific end uh end of file character or system specific line break issue? Um, Who hasn't? Yeah. Not lately, yeah. but in the old days I used to. No, totally. Mm-hmm. I just it just hit me again and it's because I was using uh I was editing CSVs in Excel. Mm. And when you do that, it converts it from a Unix line break to a Windows line break. Yep. Oh great! And I was like, oh, pals. What, what what is the what does the Windows look like these days? It's it's like LRCF or something like that. Oh right, yeah, or something right, like that. right, yeah. I, I want to LRF, yeah, Windows. Uh-huh. That's right, that's right. right. Yep. That's yeah, right. I haven't had to deal with that in a long time because uh, when who codes on Windows? <laughs> Isn't that the best though? Oh my gosh! Do you, do you remember? Do you remember those days when? Uh, when everyone was like, "Oh, if you want to, if you want to do real computer programming, you have to, you have to have a Windows computer." You know, it's funny how that shifted so hard. Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, in middle school, I was doing a lot of, uh, or I was trying to learn .NET. Yeah. And, you know, because I was afraid of PHP. Cause oh, I, totally. Because I didn't didn't get it. Afraid of JavaScript, didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And then I started for some reason picked up, um, like VB .NET and C Sharp. Yeah. And you know, this was back between like one and two dot net yeah so really young and early in the framework totally and huge difference between then and now yeah uh that the whole framework and the whole system has matured a lot i like it way more now nice but i'm not in it at all nah 
I totally missed what you were saying because I was I got multi line to work. You have to kind of copy a character and you delete back. That's so funny. Because if it's just the return character, just oh hijacks it and like says you know, tapping done, like enter. Oh wow. X. There was a jailbreak tweak that did this. H four X X O R. Am I right? Yeah. So I got a. Funny there is one uh, that. in Age of Mythology. You can yeah. use the keyboard, the thing, Leet Super Haxor, with like Leet Speak and everything. I totally forget what it does. Make you it win. Was, it was like extreme time speed, so you can just instantly get oh to somewhere and attack. Or I don't know. Wow. Yeah. What a game. What a game indeed. Well, sounds like that just about wraps it up for us, eh? Yeah. It's probably is, a it, long is this where we um play our theme song again and then after do a whole nother hour show that's right oh my. accidental <laughs> we <laughs> didn't mean to <laughs> well we totally did actually we definitely did yeah yeah completely intentional 100 percent intentional uh-huh yep. okay well so at this point i think i have in the notes here um just ignore that next week part where can we find you on the internet uh, well, I am probably best found on Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com slash Brandon underscore MN. Brandon spelt the normal way, which is to say with an A and an O in that order. <laughs> B-A-O-R-N-D-O-N. I think something like that. Uh, no, it's actually B as in Bravo, R as in Romeo, A as in Alpha, N as in November, D-O-N underscore oh, yeah. MN. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, well, what would the O have been? I don't even know. Uh, uh, a zero. Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> The other oh, is it zero? No, it's not zero. Yeah, no. Um, or you can also find me on johnsonmn.org, where I very infrequently blog, and will hopefully blog more frequently now that the semester is over. Mm-hmm. Where can we find you, Brian? You can find me on Twitter as well. I am, uh, well, I have two main accounts. Bman, B-M-A-N, 4789, or tech4789, T-E-C-H4789. What do you use the tech one for? tech things so if i'm talking about my computer development or anything that yeah but 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 what you do though is you 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 forget which one he's on because you don't think about it and you always just pick b-man anyway for any communication with him you know i would say just to be safe you should pick both like both at the same time probably but i never do i mean you could give me double notifications i can never remember which one i'm talking to i i don't as much anymore get them mixed up but sometimes i'll reply to something to the tech one with my normal one and <laughs> then i'm all confused i don't think the person really notices or cares no i, I mean no, i can't totally. I, I never notice on on the twitter here i don't ever. notice either no but yeah i would say my non-tech one is my main one mm-hmm. my tech one is just what i use more often yeah if that makes sense I you can you. also find me at brianm.me um my website i have stuff there some blogs some fun angular things and that's we're gonna put new stuff to you once you get the new setup up and yeah set up it'll and... eventually go there nice. i might i might push my other one live at something like dev that brian me i don't know that's fine we'll see. nice you can always do what i did i'll tweet was, about it make this a complicated system to redirect you all, all transparently i'll yeah, eventually yeah. take down the current brian me it'll fine. just be archived it's on it's on a uh, github if you want to literally copy exactly what i have it's there they can just read your blog on github then yeah, you could. Will there be a revolution, Brian? And will it be televised? I'm not televised, but I'll, I can put on Periscope. <laughs> so it's basically Good televised. Good one. Yeah. I Where set it up fi- and you spiked it. Exactly. <laughs> Tell you. How about you, Ryan? Where can we find you? Oh, you? you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on my blog. I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't yeah. think you've done this ever before. Oh, I, I say those same lines on every show. You should mix it up one of these days. No, can't do it. Can't go as fast. I suppose. Mm-hmm. You should just record yourself and just put it Insert. Different... Insert. Yeah. But then I'd have to edit the show. I suppose. Which That's you true. know I don't do. Right? Not right. at all. <laughs> Not one bit. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Uh, you can also uh, listen to the very extended fringe after the show, too. So, enjoy. <laughs> very extended. Two hours. Yep. Thanks for listening, guys. Yep. It's awesome. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah. We can we can um add in the clap after.
See, so I, I can, can just, just move that now. Nice. Yeah. Or is that a better one? Wait, it didn't say hi. All right. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's better. I like it. Yeah. Sweet.